So in this video I'm going to do some tests for the power ramp uh, associated with the Dueling 612's transceiver. So for the first test what I did was I went ahead and I grounded the input to the power ramp and uh, I measured all the quiescent DC voltages at uh, various points uh, in the circuit and this is what I've uh, I measured so far. So with a power supply of 13.8 volts feeding the board, the total current draw to the power amp was 240 milliamps. The stages 1 and 2 uh, was drawing 141 milliamps and the IRF 510 was drawing about 100 milliamps. So what I did was I measured the various voltages at the transistors and at the IRF 510 MOSFET. So I measured the base voltages for the first two stages, the collector voltages and the emitter voltages, as well as the gate, drain and source voltage for the IRF 510. So for the first stage I measured 171 volts for the base, 12.5 volts at the collector and 0.99 volts at the emitter. Uh, second stage transistor at the base was 0.98, at the collector was 13.7, and at the emitter was 0.28. At the IRF 510, at the gate was 404 volts, at the drain was 13.7 volts, and at the source was 0 volts, and that makes sense because the source uh, was grounded. So in this next test, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and use my uh, tracking generator to inject a signal into the amplifier and uh, measure the output uh, that's coming out on the spectrum analyzer and uh, uh, the um, output of the tracking generator is going to, I think it's going to overdrive the stages but I'm just curious to see what the output is going to look like. So the way I've got the spectrum analyzer set up is I've got uh, 10 dB attenuator connected to the tracking generator port so the tracking generator is set up to put out minus 20 dBm so with the extra 10 dB the tracking generator is putting out minus 30 uh, uh, dBm and I've got an extra uh, 10 dB of attenuation going to the input uh, of the spectrum analyzer and I've got the spectrum analyzer adding 51 dB of internal attenuation so that's 61 dB of attenuation and in total between the two ports I've got 70 dB of attenuation and at that attenuation it's barely enough for it to get uh, to for it to see the signal coming out of the tracking generator above the noise floor I've got my frequency I've got my frequency set here to uh, 100 kilohertz to 20 megahertz and I've got my bandwidth set to uh, 10 kilohertz and I'm not really interested in uh, a resolution here I just want to see what the overall performance of the uh, amplifier is going to look like the power amp is going to look like so I've got my uh, marker set at various places and I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the amplifier so there the amplifier is turned on and you're seeing a nice characteristic uh, low pass filter and uh, first thing here I've got marker set at 1, 2 and 3 marker 1 is at 7 megahertz marker 2 is at 9.8 megahertz which will be the harmonic for the, uh, the carrier which is 4.9 megahertz and uh, 14 megahertz which is the harmonic of 7 megahertz so you'll see the output here it's saying it's seeing 63 dB uh, of gain above 0 dB so that's actually 63 dBm it's seeing so this amplifier is really being hammered and uh, the um, uh, first harmonic is about 17 dB below the 63 which is you know roughly about 42, 43 dB uh, of attenuation which seems to be okay because uh, I believe the FCC wants 
uh, about uh, 43 or 44 dBm of attenuation for that first harmonic. I don't want to drive this too long because I'm really hammering that IRF 510 and I'll likely uh, blow it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this off. I thought I would check the temperature of the IRF 510 and uh, it is hot but it's not doesn't burn my fingers which I'd expected to be very very hot uh, with that output coming out of it. The other interesting thing is that if I look at the current that's being drawn by the IRF 510 it's not steady. It's uh, bouncing around here. This is DC current bouncing around so uh, I don't think this amplifier is working as it should with this test. Uh, I don't know if it's just too much signal coming in or maybe not enough signal but I think I'm going to uh, have to abandon the test with the tracking generator and uh, look at injecting a known signal into it and seeing the output what's coming out of the, uh, the amplifier. In this next test I'll be feeding a known signal into the uh, input of the uh, power amp and measuring the output and I'm going to use the signal generator to generate enough drive that's going to uh, put 5 watts coming out of the power amp and I'll also be measuring the current here that'll be drawn by the IRF 510 and uh, this will all be uh, plotted on my uh, spectrum analyzer. So I've got my SNA and it's set in frequency generator mode. It's generating a 7 megahertz uh, signal and it's about roughly about minus 9 dBm coming out of here. This is going to my uh, variable attenuator which is adding 10 dB of attenuation to that so it's roughly about 19 uh, minus 19 dBm coming out and before I found you know roughly about minus uh, 20 dBm was uh, hot enough to drive the IRF 510. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the amplifier here. So I just turned on the amplifier and it's drawing roughly about 1.2 amps and uh, here's my spectrum that I'm seeing. Now keep in mind my spectrum analyzer still has the 10 dB attenuation in line here so it's going to read uh, any signal is going to be 10 dB lower than uh, what it thinks because the tracking generator is turned off and it's just in uh, purely spectrum analyzer mode so you can see peak 1 here is at 7 megahertz and peak 3 is at 14 megahertz so the 7 megahertz signal it's saying it's seeing uh, 27 dBm plus the 10 dBm of the attenuator it's saying that's 37 dBm which is exactly 5 watts and the 14 dB that is going to be you know 10 dB higher than that but uh, if you look at this it's a down only about 27 dB uh, roughly about 27 D dB so that 14 megahertz harmonic is not down enough uh, from the primary uh, signal to pass uh, any FCC uh, spurious emission requirements.